Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu an la إن الحمد لله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا وحبيبنا محمدا عبده ورسوله يقول الله جل وعلا في كتابه الكريم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم وَمَنْ يُطْعِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَقَدَ فَازَ فَوْزًا عَظِيمًا أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أعاذنا الله وإياكم منها أجمعين أما بعد Dear brothers and sisters Last week we reflected on the importance and sacredness of the blessed day of Al Jumu'ah and the importance of the khutbah and the objectives of the khutbah offered on the day of Al Jumu'ah. We also mentioned the khutbahs of the beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and some of the themes and objectives conveyed through his khutbahs. And some weeks prior to that, we spoke about 
the centrality of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to our lives and the divine command and imperative to love him and to be connected to him on a very deep level. One of the ways that love and connection can be translated in our daily lives as Muslims is to consider everything he said, everything he did, and everything he embodied as important, as significant. To understand that there is nothing that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam said or did or embodied that was by accident, that was happenstance or fortuitous or without purpose, without deep significance for us. Everything about Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is significant. Everything about him is important. However, some things are more significant than others. Some things are more important than others. And this is absolutely normal because there are a hierarchy of values. Some things are obligatory and some things are recommended. Some things are highly emphasized and other things are less emphasized. Nevertheless, everything that comes from the beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is significant and is important and it behooves us as Muslims to honor everything that came from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When we look into his life, we see that there are things he said and did in the privacy of his own home or things he said and did in the circle of one or two or maybe ten companions. And then there are things he said and did in the presence of hundreds and even thousands. And then there are things he said and did not just once or twice, but dozens and dozens of times to show their significance. And this means that if we wish to understand Islam in its essence, we need to look for those examples of things he conveyed to hundreds and to thousands and the things he emphasized time and time again to the community. Those things he repeated are the essence of what it is to be a Muslim. One such moment of significance is a significant time period in the history of Islam. And we wish to look at the important lessons he conveyed in that very significant moment. And that moment is the very first Jumu'ah khutbah given by the Prophet ﷺ in Medina. When the Messenger of Allah ﷺ migrated with Sayyiduna Abu Bakr as-Siddiq from Mecca to Medina, it was an arduous journey that took weeks. And they stayed in Quba for around two weeks and then made their way to Medina. And there he delivered his very first Jumu'ah khutbah in the city of light, al Madinatul Munawwara. Ala sakiniha afdul salati wassalam. The blessed city of light. So today we want to reflect on what he said in that very significant khutbah. But before we can do that, we have to put the, the khutbah into context by understanding what was going on prior to it. What was going on prior to it, before the hijrah? What was going on in Medina? What were the realities on the ground in Medina before the khutbah was delivered? We see that the Muslims in Mecca were persecuted for their faith. They suffered a great deal. They underwent boycotts, harassment, persecution, beatings, and in some cases, even murder. Meanwhile, the ground was being laid for establishing Medina, what was then known as Yathrib, as a home for the new Muslim community. A place where they could live in peace and security and in an environment that would be favorable to their practice of Islam. The ground was being laid to establish that society. So we have to remember also that in this time, Rasulullah was playing the role of a peacemaker making peace between two warring tribes in Medina, 
the tribe of Al Aws and the tribe of Khazraj. These two tribes were battling it out with each other for generations. Killings, revenge killings, counter revenge killings, bloodshed going on for generations. And the Messenger of Allah وسلم, came to make peace between these tribes. So his presence in Medina was also a part of bringing an end to civil war, ending that conflict of Jahiliyyah between the Aws and the Khazraj. To bring with Islam a new paradigm of peace, of justice and morality. Both the Aws and the Khazraj were now united as Muslims. And as we know, when the Messenger of Allah وسلم, established himself in Medina, he instituted what is known as the Mu'akhat, the Pact of Brotherhood and Sisterhood, linking the people of Medina, the Ansar, with the new migrants, the Muhajirun, establishing a pact of brotherhood and sisterhood. And the Messenger of Allah وسلم, has now arrived in Medina with this background, leaving the persecution behind in Mecca, with the community now being established in Medina, having made peace between these warring tribes, and also dealing with some outlying tribes that lost a lot of business because there was no longer any weapons to sell. So in light of all of these things, the community was anticipating, waiting for the Prophet ﷺ to arrive, yearning for his arrival, singing songs upon his arrival. And when he delivered that khutbah, they were waiting in rapt attention, wondering what is he going to say to us in this most significant of moments. And alhamdulillah, those companions recorded for us the words of the Prophet ﷺ in his very first khutbah in the city of light, Al Madinat Al Munawwara. And so we read the blessed words of Ar Rasul ﷺ in this Jum'ah khutbah. It is related in Sahih Muslim and in other collections that the first Jum'ah of the Prophet ﷺ in Medina, he stood among this new community and he said to them, Alhamdulillahi. أحمده وأستعينه وأستغفره وأستهدي وأؤمن به ولا أكفره وأعادي من يكفره. All praise is due to Allah. Pay very close attention to the themes of this khutbah. What they are waiting to hear and what he says to them. All praise is due to Allah. I praise Him. I seek His aid and I ask Him for forgiveness and I seek His guidance. I believe in Him and do not disbelieve in Him. And I take an enmity those who reject him. وَأَشْهَدُ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَحْدَهُ لَا شَرِيكَ لَهُ وَأَشْهَدُ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا عَبْدُهُ وَرَسُولُهُ أَرْسَلَهُ بِالْهُدَى وَالنُّورِ وَالْمَوْعِظَةِ عَلَى فَتْرَةٍ مِنَ الرُّسُلِ وَقِلَّةٍ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ وَضَلَالَةٍ مِنَ النَّاسِ وَانْقِطَاعٍ مِنَ الزَّمَانِ وَدُنُوٌّ مِنَ السَّاعَةِ وَقُرْبٍ مِنَ الْأَجَلِ I bear witness that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah who is alone and without partner. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is his servant and messenger, with whom he sent with guidance and light, with a lofty exhortation and wisdom at an interval in which there was no messenger. This is the fatrah between Sayyidina Isa and Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam was 500 years. This was a period in which there was an interval between the messengers, an interval in which there was no messenger, he said, and a time when true knowledge was scarce and misguidance was rife among humanity, and when time was near its end and in proximity to the final hour. He says, وَمَن يُطْعِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَقَدْ رَشَدْ وَمَن يَعْصِيهِمَا فَقَدْ غَوَى وَفَرَّطَ وَضَلَّ ضَلَالٍ بَعِيدًا Whosoever obeys Allah and His Messenger is guided aright. And whosoever disobeys Allah and His Messenger has transgressed and trespassed the boundary set by Allah and His Messenger and has fallen into misguidance and deviation. Now he gives his counsel to the new Muslim community. He says, وَأُوصِيكُمْ بِتَقْوَى اللَّهِ فَإِنَّهُ خَيْرُ مَا أَوْصَى بِهِ الْمُسْلِمُ الْمُسْلِمُ أن يحضه على الآخرة وأن يأمره بتقوى الله فاحذروا ما حذركم الله من نفسي ولا أفضل من ذلك نصيحة ولا أفضل من ذلك ذكرى I counsel you, he said, to have taqwa of Allah. 
Consciousness of Allah, mindfulness of Allah, fearfulness of Allah, all of the divine taqwa of Allah. For the best thing which a Muslim can counsel his fellow Muslim is to urge him toward the hereafter and enjoin him to have taqwa. Be wary as Allah has warned you from himself. There is no better advice or remembrance than this. He goes on. وَإِنَّ تَقْوَى اللَّهِ لِمَنْ عَمِدَ بِهِ عَلَى وَجَدٍ وَمَخَافَةٍ مِّنْ رَبِّهِ عَوْنُ صِدْقٍ عَلَى مَا تَبَهُونَ مِنْ أَمْرِ الْآخِرَةِ وَمَنْ يُصْلِحِ الَّذِي بَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَ اللَّهِ مِنْ أَمْرِهِ فِي السِّرِّ وَالْعَلَانِيَةِ لَا يَنْوِي بِذَلِكَ إِلَّا وَجْهَ اللَّهِ يَكُنْ لَهُ ذِكْرًا فِي عَاجِلِ أَمْرِهِ وَذُخْرًا فِي مَا بَعْدِ الْمَوْتِ حِينَ يَفْتَقِرُ الْمَرْءُ إِلَى مَا قَدَّمْ وَمَا كَانَ مِنْ سِوَى ذَلِكَ يَوَدُّ لَوْ أَنَّ بَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَهَا أَمَدًا بَعِيدًا وَيُحَذِّرُكُمُ اللَّهُ نَفْسَهُ وَاللَّهُ رَأُوفٌ بِالْعِبَادِ Truly, he says, the taqwa of Allah is for the one who acts upon it out of awe and fear of his Lord. It is a faithful helper for what you seek in the hereafter. Whosoever rectifies, makes right, what is between him and his Lord, fulfilling the divine command publicly and privately, only seeking and intending the countenance, the sake of Allah, such a person will be honored in this world and his efforts will be a treasure store for him after death when a person will be in need of what he has sent forward and will wish that there be a vast distance between himself and his bad deeds. And Allah warns you of himself and truly Allah is compassionate towards his servants. وَالَّذِي صَدَقَ قَوْلُهُ وَأَنْجَزَ وَعْدَهُ لَا خُلْفَ لِذَارِكَ فَإِنَّهُ يَقُولُ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ مَا يُبَدَّلُ الْقَوْلُ لَدَيَّ وَمَا أَنَا بِظَلَّامٍ لِلْعَبِيدِ He then says, indeed, he, Allah, speaks the truth and he fulfills his promise. He speaks the truth and fulfills his promise and never breaks it. For he says, and he is the exalted and the sublime and majestic Nothing is changed before me, and I am not unjust to my servants. Have taqwa of Allah now and in the future, publicly and privately, for whosoever has taqwa of Allah, Allah will wipe away his sins and magnify his reward. And whosoever has taqwa of Allah, then he has triumphed with the supreme success. وَإِنَّ تَقْوَ اللَّهِ جَلَّ وَعَلَى تَقِيُّ مَقَّتِهِ وَتَقِيُّ عُقُوبَتِهِ وَتَقِيُّ سَخَطِهِ وَإِنَّ تَقْوَ اللَّهِ تُبَيِّضُ الْوُجُوهِ وَتُرُضِ الرَّبِّ وَتَرْفَعُ الدَّرَجَةِ خُضُوا بِحَظِّكُمْ وَلَا تُفَرِّطُوا فِي جَنْبِ اللَّهِ قَدْ عَلَّمَكُمُ اللَّهُ كِتَابَهُ وَنَهَجَ لَكُمْ سَبِيلَهُ لِيَعْلَمَ الَّذِينَ صَدَقُوا وَلِيَعْلَمَ الْكَاذِبِينَ He says, verily, the taqwa of Allah secures one against Allah's chastisement, punishment, and wrath. The taqwa of Allah illumines the faces and pleases the Lord and raises one in spiritual degrees. You must, therefore, take your portion of taqwa and do not neglect the rights of Allah. For he has taught you his book and described to you his path so that he may make it known those who are truthful and may make it known those who are liars. And he concludes, فَأَحْسِنُوا كَمَا أَحْسَنَ اللَّهُ إِلَيْكُمْ وَعَادُوا أَعْدَاءَهُ وَجَاهِدُوا فِي اللَّهِ حَقَّ جِهَادِي هُوَ اجْتَبَاكُمْ وَسَمَّاكُمُ الْمُسْلِمِينَ لِيَهْلِكَ مَنْ هَلَكَ عَنْ بَيِّنَا وَيَحْيَا مَنْ حَيَّ عَنْ بَيِّنَا so do good as Allah has done good unto you and take his enemies as your enemies and strive in the way of Allah with a true striving. For he has chosen you and named you as Muslims so that whoever should perish will perish and whosoever shall live will live. ذلك بأن الله يقضي على الناس ولا يقضون عليه ويملك من الناس ولا يملكون من الله أكبر ولا قوة إلا بالله العظيم. He concludes by saying there is no power except by Allah. 
Remember Allah abundantly, he says, and do good deeds in preparation for what lies tomorrow after death. For whosoever rectifies, makes right, what is between him and Allah, Allah will suffice him in what lies between him and other people. For it is Allah who shall judge people, and people will not rule in opposition to his judgment. He is sovereign over humanity, and they do not have independent sovereignty that can overrule him. Allah is the greatest, and there is no movement or power except by Allah, the exalted, the tremendous. This, dear brothers and sisters, is the inaugural khutbah, the first khutbah delivered by Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam upon entering the city of light, al madinatul Munawwara, when it was established. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to remove the rust from our hearts and to grant us the capacity, the isti'dad, to receive the sublime prophetic words, his prophetic counsel, and to put it into practice, to give us taqwa and to give us the fruits of taqwa as promised by Allah and His Messenger, Ameen. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa aftaru salati wa atamu taslim ala Sayyidina wa Mawlana Muhammadin al-Sadiq al-Ameen. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man istanna bi sunnatihi ila yawm al-deen wa ba'd. Dear brothers and sisters, we have been honored. It is a great honor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to us to be able to hear the blessed and sacred words of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. To hear the very first khutbah he delivered to the community upon arriving in Medina. It is a timeless message. And this message has a number of themes that will always be relevant to us. There will never come a time in which any individual Muslim or community will ever be free of needing this prophetic counsel. And we see in this khutbah, this short khutbah of the Prophet Sallallahu certain important themes. We see that he begins this address as he begins every address with the Remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the dhikr of Allah, praising Allah, seeking His aid, seeking His forgiveness, seeking His guidance, because we are ever in need of all of those things. We see also the priority He gave to Tawheed and Risada of establishing and reminding perpetually the importance of knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and acknowledging Allah as the absolute and supreme creator and acknowledging the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam as the seal of messengers and this is why we always hear his khutbas after praising Allah he mentions the testimony of iman of la ilaha illallah muhammadun rasulullah we see here also that he reminds the ummah that this divine message and the message bearer the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam have come toward the end of time. As the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in another hadith, Bu'ithtu ana wasa'a kahatayn. I have been sent along with the final hour, kahatayn, like these two. And he was pointing with his two blessed fingers, his index and middle finger, showing a slight space in between them and showing the proximity, how close his being sent is to the final hour to come upon humanity. He mentions also in this khutbah that uprightness and righteousness is by holding to the divine standard of obeying Allah and avoiding disobedience to Allah. And we see the central most theme of this khutbah, the counsel to have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In this very first khutbah, as he enters Medina, he speaks about taqwa. As he leaves the dunya, he speaks about taqwa. Because that is the overarching theme in the life of the Muslim. He speaks about it, he advises it, he urges it. He speaks about its virtues, its benefits, its fruits. And he warns against neglecting taqwa. 
There is no greater wasiyah than taqwallah. A person asks for advice, the best advice you could ever give that person, and the most comprehensive. Usikum bi taqwallah. Usikum wa nafsi al mudhniba bi taqwallah. I counsel you and my sinful self with taqwa of Allah. It's the very best counsel. And lastly, he tells the message, urging the community to remember that their work has just begun. وَجَاهِدُوا فِي اللَّهِ حَقَّ جِهَادِي هُوَ اجْتَبَاكُمْ And strive in the way of Allah with a true striving. He has selected you. He has chosen you. The work has just begun. And he tells them to prepare for meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and making things right between them and their Lord Jalla Jalaluhu. This, dear brothers and sisters, is the timeless message conveyed to the hearts of the new community. The advice they received as they set out to follow the Prophet Sallallahu as he was building this civilization of light, al Madinah al-Munawwara. Enlightened by his sacred presence and enlightened by the divinely revealed code of ethics and order sent in the Qur'an and in the luminous way of his Sunnah Sallallahu Alaihi wa ala alihi wa sallam. Dear brothers and sisters, these counsels will never grow old. We will never grow out of needing this counsel of taqwa of Allah that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam delivered as his very first khutbah. And the lesson for us is that all goodness for us is found in living this golden counsel. All good for our family is found in living this golden counsel. And all good for our community is found in living this golden counsel. And all decay, all moral rot and failure come as a result of neglecting this timeless prophetic counsel. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to enliven our hearts with this prophetic counsel and with these beautiful teachings and to remove from us the rust of complacency, of apathy, of laziness and inattentiveness from our hearts and to replace those negative qualities with wakefulness and presence and openness to receive this prophetic counsel. Ameen. Rabbana hab lana min azwajina wa dhurriyatina qurrata a'yun wa ja'alna lil muttaqina imama. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa qina adhab al-nar. Allahumma salli ala sayyidina Muhammadin abdika wa rasulika al-nabiya al-ummi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallima tasliman kathira bi qadri azamati thatika fi kulli waqtin wa hin. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun. Wa salamun ala al-mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Uqumu ila salatikum.